right. Uh, welcome uh, back, uh, engineering students, to this uh, exciting session in looking at these two uh, other uh, functional groups uh, in organic molecules. Now we're going to be introducing uh, a new functional group, which uh, is going to be called. Uh, it's called, going to be called a carbonyl group. Uh, I think by now you are now clear that uh, you're not clear with those uh, uh, balls, yeah, uh, the the color codes. That the black ball represents carbon. By now, yeah, you are aware. The black ball represents carbon. The red ball represents oxygen. It's just the standard, yeah. Uh, the uh, okay, the white balls are going to represent what? Uh, hydrogen. And then later I'll just be introducing uh, the blue ball is going to represent nitrogen. Yeah. So just remember, blue ball for nitrogen, white balls as hydrogen, uh, black ball as carbon, red ball as, as, uh, as oxygen. So, so this is what I'm calling a, a carbonyl group. Can you see, uh, that looks like this one, but these are what? These are double bond. So this structure is, is flat and the bond angles are 120 degrees. Bond angles are 120 degrees. So, so the carbonyl group, which I'm showing here, has got all the bond angles as 120 degrees, 120 degrees. So all throughout it becomes 360 degrees, the structure is is flat 120 120 120 the stack is flat where there is the carbonyl group that place is 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 flat oxygen carbon and then this is called the the carbon carbonyl what's that word carbon carbonyl carbonyl group can you see it well carbonyl group so um the two structures that you're going to show now they contain what? The, the carbonyl group. Now, why am I putting the aldehyde and the ketone together? Um, as you're going to see, uh, for the ketone, there is an alkyl group, R we now know, it is a sign for an alkyl group. An alkyl group is any carbon containing uh, uh, alkyl group like the methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, pentyl, hexyl. They're just given the, the letter R. R is just a general form of an alkyl group attached to it. So, so a ketone has got two alkyl groups. But when you're dealing with an aldehyde, uh, when it, okay, what you're saying is this. A ketone, take the, this one as the, as the carbon. So this is the carbonyl. So a ketone like this one has got a methyl group, has got a methyl group, but but the thing is, uh, you've got a, a carbon containing uh, group next to the carbonyl group and another uh, carbon containing group attached to the to the carbonyl group. When you're dealing with a, with an aldehyde, the situation is is different. Now I, I want to show you two different scenarios. Okay, let me come with the simple one. Okay. Here is the carbonyl group, uh, carbon with the oxygen double bond, yeah. And then here I've got I've got a hydrogen and a hydrogen, yeah. So I've got your carbonyl group, and then it, uh, this one has got two uh, two hydrogens, and then this one has got ha, has got a hydrogen, and then there's uh, this an alkyl group. So what can you see there? For an aldehyde there has to be at least one hydrogen attached to the to the carbonyl group in this case there are two hydrogens two hydrogens attached to the uh, to the carbonyl group in this case there is uh, one uh, one hydrogen and and an alkyl group yeah in this case the alkyl group is a methyl group yeah so an aldehyde has got to have at least, at least one hydrogen attached to the, to the carbonyl group. And then a ketone, 
there is no hydrogen attached to the to the carbonyl group so just remember that an aldehyde has at least one hydrogen attached to the to the carbonyl group so in other words this is the simplest uh, aldehyde it has a carbon a carbonyl group and then two hydrogens now so for all the other aldehydes they will have this general form but there's an alkyl group and then there's a carbonyl uh, there's a carbonyl group and then there's a hydrogen yeah so for ketone there is no hydrogen attached to the to the carbonyl group so that is something which you just have to remember so this tells you the simplest aldehyde has got one carbon atom so i'm going to use a word myth regarding to the aldehyde but for the ketone because there is no hydrogen and hydrogen the simplest one will have will have what will have a carbon and a carbon so the simplest ketone will have three carbon atoms the simplest ketone will have three carbon atoms but the simplest aldehyde will have one carbon atom so for the ketone you are going to start with with the one uh, one starting with with prop yeah prop four for three carbon atom but for the aldehyde you are going to start with the word myth for one carbon atom so let's come to the IUPAC nomenclature for the IUPAC nomenclature for for the aldehydes the the ALK for the alkyl group is quite standard yeah it tells you the number of of carbon atom met for one carbon atom eat for two carbon atom prop no yeah prop four three carbon atoms and the rest yeah so the suffix for the aldehyde has got a n a l anal yeah and for the ketone there is a n o n e anon so so um you should not confuse especially for the for the aldehyde you know for the ketone is quite clear uh, there is an o n e yeah? but for the aldehyde um it may be easy to confuse with the with the functional group which you learned a short while ago that is the alkanol you see for the alkanol which is for the alcohols there is a n o o l alkanol for the aldehydes is a n a l so the difference in the in the iupac for the aldehyde and the ketone is just the last the second last uh, letter here a for the aldehyde and O for the for the alcohol eh? O L for for the alcohol. So it should not confuse with alkanol. <coughs> Excuse me. So so for the name it means that there is the the myth and then there is the A and L. So the simplest aldehyde will be called methanol. Uh, so the second one is could be called uh, ethanol. So here I've shown. Uh, three carbon atoms one two three and then something which you'll have to notice is that the carbon containing the carbonyl group which is in this case is uh, uh, carbon with the oxygen double bond that one will always be number one for the for the aldehyde so that carbon will be referenced carbon number one whichever way it it is looking like so for example like this one can also be drawn like uh, let me just try to see let me just try to to delete here uh, uh let me just try to delete there i see that i i can draw it like this here ch2 ch3 yeah? so can you see in this case i'm beginning from here carbon number one number two number three in this case i'm beginning from this side this from uh, from right to left uh, yeah one two three in this case i'm beginning from left to right one two three so the carbon containing the carbonyl group that is the priority yeah that is the priority you start from there okay now like this one is one two so one two three four five so that is pent and then anal yeah so this is pentanal yeah pen pentanal all right uh now for the ketone 
you're simply going to get your uh, number of carbon atoms, you count them, the longest carbon chain, and then you add A, N, O, N, E. So like this one's got one, two, three, that is three carbon atoms, that is prop, and then you add A, N, O, N, E. So this will be propanone, which is the simplest uh, ketone, the simplest ketone, propanone. Hmm? Propanone. Now, for the next one is, um, I've added one, two, three, four, I've added one carbon atom. Now, this, so this one is called one, two, three, so it will be called what? But, butanone, yeah? Four carbon atoms. But when you're dealing with uh, five carbon atoms, then there is more than one uh, probable place where you can put your you can put your uh, your carbonyl group. Uh, let me just try to to delete here. Okay, so just try to compare the one which I've drawn here and the one which I've drawn here. Uh, okay, three. Uh huh. Okay, that in is uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. So the carbonyl group is on what position? Uh, it's not on position. The, whichever way you look at it, one, two, number three, number four, number five. The carbonyl group is on carbon number number three. So it will be penta three on. In this case, one, two, three, four. Five. So the carbonyl group is on carbon number two. So this is pen, tan, and then the, the carbonyl group is on carbon number two. Have you seen that? Yeah. So the carbonyl group is on carbon number two, and the, this one, the carbonyl group is on carbon number three. So I'm indicating pen, tan, three on, or uh, pen, tan, two on. And just remember, if there is no functional group, there is no problem in calling this one. For example, this one has two pen, sorry, pentanon. You can still call it, call it uh, two pentanon. And this one you can also call it three, three pentanon. Can you see that? This one you can call it three pentanon. You can put your three at the beginning if there is no other functional group, yeah? And if there is no other substituent, yeah? If there is no other substituent. Otherwise, this number here can interfere with, with if you've got alkyl group or something like a halogen and some other things, it can try to interfere with that, with the with the naming of that. So when there are functional groups, you'd rather put the position of the carbonyl group inside the the name of the of the I mean of the ketone or the aldehyde. Yeah? Are you okay with that? Now the thing is this: for the aldehyde. Because the carbonyl group is always on number one, on carbon number one, there is nothing like saying uh, propan one uh, one al. It is always on carbon number one. So for aldehyde, there is no number. There's a okay. What I'm saying is that you don't indicate something like like uh, prop. Sorry, propan prop. You don't indicate. You don't indicate the carbonyl group as being on carbon number one, yeah? Are you okay on that? So you don't you don't indicate like that. Because the the aldehyde is always on carbon number one. If if it is the main functional group. So this one should be called propanal. You don't indicate even the pentanal, you don't indicate the position of the of, of the aldehyde because it's always on on, on carbon number one. Are you okay with that? So later we're going to see if you have other functional groups attached to it, how you're going to name it. For example, alkyl group like like uh, like like an al uh, alkyl group and uh, halogens, even the alcohol groups attached to it and the rest. Yeah. But now I think it's quite clear on how you name aldehyde and the ketone. I hope you really enjoyed the naming of these two functional groups. So in a short while you're going to be looking at. How you name the second last uh, functional group which you are going to call an amine. Amine is going to be related to, to ammonia. Yeah? So we are going to look at that one and then we look at the last functional group later, the carboxylic acid. So I hope you really enjoy this. I think it's now clear on the 
on the on the way in which you can name this uh, this functional groups according to the IUPAC nomenclature. Yeah. So we're going to take a short break and then we'll come back and look at the next functional group. Thank you very much. Yeah.